What's up, people? Welcome back to another episode of Horror Research 30. And tonight, we have Mike McGlynn as a guest. we got some fun stuff to talk about. Going to review a movie a little bit. And dive into the inter-review. Yes, that's a word. Inter-review. It's an interview and a review mixed into one. Think about it, people. Listen, if Beyonce can get a word in the dictionary, I should be able to get a word in the dictionary. Isn't Bootylicious in the dictionary now? Oh, wow. It should be. Wow. Inter-review. Is that in- is... Webster, call me. Very concerning on the state of our. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. I like yeah, it. How's everybody? How's, how are you guys doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm better now that I'm fed. <laughs> there you go. That's good. That's good. I'm happy to hear that. I'm doing good too. I'm doing good too. We did just watch Bloody. Well, actually, it was about hour, two hours ago. Now that we finished it, right? Yep. More or less. Yep. Maybe right around six ish, six ten, something like that. Yeah. And first time watch. And the funny thing is, is I did back the movie. I have it. And I just freaking watched it today on Tubi. And uh that is a fun fucking slasher. Oh awesome. <laughs> that is a fun slash because I, I like how you guys um like you pulled from slasher films. Oh yeah. You pulled from slasher films, but I like how you twisted it and made it your own. What's up, Journey? Journey, how's it going? Hey, how you guys like twisted it and made it your own? It was just I was like, oh my gosh, this is fun. This is fun, and the twist at the end, which we'll eventually get to. We don't have to get to it right now, but the twist at the end, I was like, holy shit! I did mm-hmm. not see that coming <laughs> at all. <laughs> at all, like that was. If you haven't seen Bloody Summer Camp, people, you guys need to go watch it. It is out on Tubi. Right, at, right after this episode, go watch it because it you're gonna have a good time with it. You should have a really good time with it. Oh man, I think I enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, uh, if we're wrong, but it's definitely a lot of uh, '80s, uh, uh, especially '80s camp uh, slasher uh, love letters uh, in there. Um, so many things uh, came into play on its own, uh, like it kind of uh, worked out. Like uh, one funny thing is in the very beginning, uh, the girls when they go to the convenience store, uh, that convenience store, like all those old relics and everything there, that was all like all outdated. That was all in there. Like there was oh, wow. three items in there, like they like that we had to cover up. Like it was like a flat screen TV, uh, and then like some uh, microwave that looked a little bit uh, too modern. Um, and uh, there's one there, a little small item, and everything else, like, whoa, everything else is just perfect. <laughs> uh, wow, uh, that's awesome. Like, and all, and all the cars being like uh, in the 19 era. I mean, most of those were just people who were nice enough to say, "Hey, I got a car, like, you know, I'll, I'll bring it by," and it just worked out uh, for the best on that on that front. And uh, we we're very happy to try to keep it very close to the 80s nostalgia as we possibly could, and, uh, really give everyone that feeling about like they were. Mm-hmm. Um, in the eighties uh, again, you know, from everything from just like the humor, the outfits, uh, you know, just the, just, just the overall m- m- mentality. I mean, you know, to kind of go back and, you know, some of it were like, yep, that was eighties. And there was, I was like, Oh my God. Yep. That was the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, give a little best uh, of the both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How was it? So how was it working on this movie? Um, Bloody summer camp. Oh, honestly, um, I've uh, said this many times before. Uh, even though I'm currently filming my third movie with Slasher 15, um, Blade Summer Camp, I think, will always be my absolute favorite movie of all time. Uh, it was the very first movie I got to ever do. Uh, it, what got me into the in- industry. Um, and um, I just, every day felt like a vacation. I mean, plus, it, when we were filming that, COVID hit, so we had some delays. We ended up filming there. I want to say it was something like... Uh, 13 months um, uh, on and off because of COVID and stuff, but it was just all long weekends and stuff. And then we decided just to do air fun things to keep ourselves entertained. Like our uh, DP uh, made like a little fun little uh, a Lego, uh, uh, our Blaze uh, trailer that you can actually see on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, just, just a kind of fun way to keep things, uh, people, people entertained. And then uh, some of us, we were able to get together and we, uh, Decided to try a fun little gimmick out. We're like, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to run a new Indiegogo. And uh, how about this one? Uh, you can do pies to the face. Uh, you know, you can buy a pie to get us pie to the face. And then we'll do a live feed about it. We've all missed each other. And we're designed to see each other. Even if it means just smashing pies in each other's faces for fun. <laughs> nice. um, 
And it just started getting everyone going again. And then the camp lightened up a little bit. Uh, they lost a lot of their business because uh, they were actually, this is actually a legitimate camp we filmed at. It was a camp for uh, kids with special needs and the handicap. Uh, uh, um, and uh, they lost a lot of their business in the summer from uh, doing weddings and stuff. So they gave us a uh, oh, oh, free range of having the whole camp. Uh, and we ran it out for like uh, longer periods of times. And they gave us great deals on it, allow us free range to do all, all of it. And uh, it worked out uh, great in the end because we got so much more footage in it. But it's one of the reasons why, many it, it, it's just my favorite spot. After we were done filming, like I was that guy. I was the first one usually on set. And me and the DP were usually the last ones to leave in the evenings. And I would usually just hang out on the back porch, just overlooking the whole camp. And just basking on all the footage that was captured that day and stuff and all the great footage. And just... We just we we knew right right away, and I had a great feeling right away. This was going to be something very special, like you know, and you know, even my wife would even say too that she feels very strongly. This could be one of those like uh, superway camps where like it'll mm -hmm. be seen, it'll go dormant, and if we're lucky, maybe fifteen and seventeen years from now, a group's going to come by and see it and go, "Oh my god, this is actually a, a decent and fun film to watch." There you go. There you go. I could so, see that. You got a lot of those little things from the '80s or whatnot. So, what was where, where did it all start for you in your mind? Where where what what was the first thing you kind of thought of to start filming, and then where did it start snowballing from there? Oh, uh, that was yeah. all on the uh, director uh, Dave Kerr. Uh, uh, funny story with Boy Summer Camp. Um, I did become his producer on that film, but in the very very beginning, um, I actually was a perk buyer. Okay. Uh, I was someone who just bought a perk to be uh, killed in the film, um, and um, and then uh, uh, before we even started filming, I think Dave uh, asked to uh, meet me and stuff because he realized that we only lived about thirty uh, minutes away from each other, and he and he just got done uh, wrapping up uh, his last film, uh, Return of the Slasher. Okay. Uh, so he uh, so he was like, hey, well, hey, you know, some of them will be here, some of them will probably be in the next film. Why don't you come over here and meet them and. You know, we can see what happens, and uh, I ended up getting along really well with all of them, and um, we all became uh, good friends and stuff. And then uh, they've had a good idea for a character for me, which is what you saw the Roger character. And then uh, we had our first script reading, and I did it in my character, like with all the raspy, kind of like crackling voice and everything. Uh, they, he ended up loving it, uh, and so did the cast. They all just started laughing, and uh. One thing led to another. Dave just started adding a couple extra scenes, and then I just got more excited. And then, um, and then after uh, that, like you know, uh, he just kept on doing more. Before I knew it, like you know, I had a lot of uh, extra scenes in the film that was never really agreed upon. And I was still there on set. And then uh, one day, Dave pulled me over and goes, "Hey, man, uh, can I talk to you?" And I was like, "Oh crap!" You know, here it is. I've done all probably all the filming I can possibly get in with the man. He's gonna tell me it's been great. Time for you to move on. And uh, Dave actually said, man, you've uh, done a lot, man. You, you're one of the first ones to show up here every day. You're one of the last ones to leave. You help out the crew with everything. Uh, essentially, you're exactly what a uh, producer would be. I could really use uh, a good uh, producer. Um, how would you feel about becoming my uh, producer? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's wow. like one ticket. That means I get to stay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. That they, I, all right, you know what? I, I am backing your reasoning as to why this is your favorite freaking movie that you were a part of because that just so much has happened just from you originally just being a backer to get killed in the movie to being a big part of the movie, and now you're a producer and you're in other movies as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been his uh, producer uh, for his, uh, his, his next two films, too, uh, Go Away, uh, which will be uh, coming out to Auburn's backers here uh, in the next uh, month uh, or, or so, um, given on how fast we get it back from distribution. Um, and then we are currently working on uh, The Slasher Nurse, uh, which is a reboot of the first two films. Um, uh, uh, because uh, this time around, you know, uh, we have a lot more of a, of a good following behind us. People like our films. They see improvement with every one of Dave's films. If you see Go Away, you're going to definitely uh, see improvement, like, you know, uh, like from uh, Bloody Summer Camp. Uh, just, you know, we always try to do better than the last film. And originally, this was just supposed to be a, a project we were going to do behind the scenes. Uh, you know, maybe we could start just doing a small crowdfunder. We figured, you know, even if we get like 10, 15,000, you know, we can get some good special effects in. Uh, the best part was like a lot of our, our, of our old cast members were already on board uh, to help out and do this. Uh, like, you know, like, and uh, they were just already game. So we were already great. We got 
great talent who's ready to here to jump on board and help us out with this. And so uh, we decided just to run a quick uh, uh, crowdfunder, and uh, which we were even very surprised. I mean, I, 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 Dave will tell you even himself that like Dave's optimistic with his crowdfunding. I'm I'm like, and even I'm the most optimistic, happy-go-lucky guy in every other area when you compare the two of us. Like that's the one area I'm so pessimistic on. I'm like, dude, we'll be lucky if we hit 15, 20k if we're absolutely, absolutely lucky. Uh, you know, because uh, we didn't do a pitch trail like we normally do for our films. Like, because like I said, it was something we were just gonna do in the meantime. Because uh, we currently casted our next film, which will be after uh, Slashner's called Awfully Strange Night, um, which is more of a uh, kind of like a uh, paranormal comedy, but it's a lot more than that though too. Mm -hmm. But we realized that one was going to take a lot of time to get organized, get ready, uh, get a lot of things put into place. And uh, we wanted to go and do something. We didn't want to wait that long. So we thought that'd be a great time. And to our surprise, uh, it turns out like our following uh, did not want just a nice, simple upscale reboot from the first two uh, Sasha Nurse movies. No, no, no. They put in the biggest crowdfunder we have ever achieved in our lives. Uh, with one single crowdfunder, we are almost like we're like a uh, hundred and ninety-eight dollars away from hitting fifty-eight thousand, which is by far our biggest, most successful crowdfunder ever. Um, to give you an idea, go away. We got about fifty-three thousand before Indiegogo fees and all that with two campaigns. Uh, Bloody Summer Camp, we ran three campaigns, and I think we got somewhere around 42000 before all over any go-go fees and everything. Um, so that was just something that we did not expect, because we, like I said, we didn't really even put a lot of effort into it. We're like, yeah, hey, we're going to run a crowdfunder, we're going to redo Slash Nurse. Who wants to, you know, partake? And during that, everyone said, oh, yeah, and not only that, it's going to be better than your last two films. <laughs> hmm. So no pressure there, but uh, I really feel like we may have come together. Dave uh, has found some absolutely remarkable locations. Uh, I know I posted a lot of them uh, like on my personal uh, Facebook page, but I know Dave has on our Slasher 15 one as well. We rented out a, a hospital uh, like out of Richmond that we just got done filming at. We, we had this uh, old, like, like awesome-looking stone church uh, like uh, they got to do some filming at. We ran out this giant two-level uh, wraparound porch cabin with a hot tub and pool table, like the whole the whole shabab, uh, you know, for a good part as well. We got to rent out a bar scene, which is going to be just. I can't say anything, but all I'm going to say is, when you watch the Slashers, you ain't going to forget that bar scene. <laughs> oh, man, you will not forget that bar scene. That's I, nice. That, I like that. I like that. That's dope promo for that movie right there. You ain't gonna forget that bar scene when you see this movie. Oh no, bar scene. And uh, Amber is uh, like uh, who also plays our slash nurse is also the special effects artist. Uh, she did all the special effects for Go Away. Mm -hmm. nice. uh, so all those cool kills you saw were all done by her, and she's gotten even a bigger budget to play with now. And she's been having a complete field day on slash nurse. So. Between the locations, the great cast, uh, and the awesome special effects, I really think everyone's going to love this one. And everyone's going to be really happy they uh, backed us on this one. Uh, uh, it went from, like I said, a simple, let's do better than our first two films, to uh, this is going to be our best one to date. <laughs> there we go. That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. That's how it goes. Hell keep yeah. Sh keep showing up, and it just gets more better and better. The process just becomes easier. And you you mentioned the kills in this movie. The kills were really good in this. The kills were really. I was like, wow. I like how the ones you guys showed. You didn't hide. You didn't hide. You guys weren't scared. You're like, no, look. This is what we know how to do. That's what we could do. And we're mm -hmm. fucking good at it. And you guys are fucking good at that shit. Because I was like, these look good. These look really, really good. I'm I'm so impressed because when you when you watch the teaser trailer of this, which I. Guys, you guys know I don't watch trailers anymore. When you watch the teaser trailer of this, you think it's going to be a lower budget and like a different type of... It's like... It's a spoof trailer, which going back, it's fucking genius. It's fucking genius. And I feel like all movies, including Hollywood, should do that just so you're not getting spoiled what's going to happen in the movie. You see the characters. You may see the you may see the villain. You might see the villain. You might not see the villain, but you see the characters. You get a few jumps. You get a few laughs. And then... But that's it. You shouldn't get the act. You shouldn't get what's actually in the movie. Mm. So, 
I agree yeah. completely. Even if it's th- even if it's like you do a trailer of just throwaway scenes. I don't know how trailers work, but I'm just saying if it's something like that, I don't know. I mean, usually with us, that's what we always try to do. We always try to make a good pitch trailer to go with our Indiegogo because one, it shows all our backers how serious we are. But you know, even the ones who know that we're serious, it gives them a proof of concept of where we're going with this. But we also get to give them that fun exclaimer too. It's like, but if you really think this is cool, because I mean, if you find the uh, Go Away uh, pitch trailer, that was actually a really good pitch trailer that we uh, did, and the end product is even better than, than that. And that's what we always try to push on to people is like, if you think the pitch trailer looks good, just imagine if we get our funding. Um, you know, for the- Everything's going to be that much crazier and that much better than what you're actually watching right now. This is just a fun little like taste of what we can do. Uh, and if we get the funding, it'll be just that much better. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. awesome. Really, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, we, we st- try to stay away from trailers as much as we can because we don't want to be spoiled. We want to make sure we give the genuine reaction or whatnot. You know what I mean? But th- these films, they're just, I, I'm just so amazed at how good and how much better certain things keep getting as we keep watching more and more uh fan films and independent films uh, just opened my whole fucking palette up you know what i mean my whole <laughs> movie palette opened right up awesome man you know there's a lot of great indie, indie filmmakers out there and some of really great ones some of that this thought all had been absolutely remarkable i mean because i know you even mentioned about fan made films like uh the never hiking in the low uh, mm-hmm. uh, i mean my god i mean i mean he took such a great, simple, like, concept, uh, like, in one particular part of, of a classic series that makes it a classic series and drove it home and mm-hmm. did it in such a great uh, way, too, stylistically and everything, uh, to where, like, it just made you uh, get that love letter again feeling uh, from mm-hmm. classics. And, uh, that, I mean, in the end, especially when it comes to like, our, like, our, our like, mass slashers, we all want a little bit of that nostalgia still in there. I mean, oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I'm a sucker for that stuff. I can't, yeah. I cannot help myself with it. You know, it's because Friday the 13th is my favorite slasher. The, uh, I just love it. So then I, I'm not saying I expect slashers to be just like that. Cause I don't want them to be just like that, but you still, you almost want that kind of feel from either from that, from nightmare on Elm street, from Halloween. You want just a tiny feel from those original films, even if it's not a fan film, if it's just like a, an original film, like how your films were, how your film is with um, Bloody Summer Camp. Oh, yeah. But you still get like the feel from Friday the 13th. You still get the feel from Halloween. You know what I mean? You still get the feel from just because of certain things you guys did and said it in the movie. Of course, you said it on purpose, of course, or the way things were done. And I loved every single bit of it. Uh. But I'm like, they did it in their own way, but you still get those feels for it. And I think that's what really helped. I think that's what really helped this to, as well, in my opinion, for me, at least. Oh yeah, no, I mean, and we just got so lucky on, on that one too. Like I said, we got a great cast and again, the celebrities we got, I mean, Felissa Rose came in and she was absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. Right. I mean, and then, uh, and then of course, um, uh, Dave Sheridan came in as the uh, sheriff and, God, that man was just on point. I mean, yeah, he did a lot of his own uh, ad living for that uh, for that film. Uh, like when he did that whole interrogation, uh, or like in calling him all his '80s uh, references, that was all like him. Like we were all standing behind him with our phones looking up, uh, worried that he was going to say something that was uh, that was past like the 1986 day. Like, no, okay, that, that no, that's fine, that's fine. Oh my God, he did his homework. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's awesome. That's Almost- awesome. Heart attack, but man, it was it was awesome though. I mean, like I said, it was just such a great experience uh, with all of them. And I remember you told me I, I love the twist ending. Uh, I'll watch in on something fun um, to uh, that. Um, almost the entire cast uh, did not know the ending. Like we we wrote out a different ending. Um, I love that. Yeah, and the, uh, like in the ending that they read, they actually thought it was uh, Michael uh, Deturis, uh you know, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 slacker who uh, got to come back to camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was written in uh, in their copy. It was written in there that he was the killer, and it took us, uh, you know, having to do uh, some. Uh, well, I mean, obviously there was uh, one or two uh, cast members. Obviously, you uh, you would by fall, like you know, yeah. Who got, who got to know the spoiler, but almost the entire cast uh, did not know, and they didn't find out until they all came to the premiere. I love that. I love like, that. wait, when the hell did that happen? The old switcheroo. Because oh. it, 
it adds more and it's yeah. you're surprising your cast with that it's like for the ones that didn't know that was going on they're just like oh shoot wow that's awesome that this happened oh yeah no it threw them all off and it was so funny because after we did that they were because uh, a lot of a lot of those same cast members uh came back for uh go away uh and uh, and, um, and uh well, what made that one a little funny was we didn't write a uh alternative uh, script for go away it was just more of like you know no this is a straight you know home invasion slasher you know here here it is and they're like uh-huh so what really happens in the end and i'm like what's on the paper like mm-hmm uh-huh so now you got messy now yeah. that's gonna be the back of their heads every single time they work with you guys every single time <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we're still getting on the side too. Like, yeah, we've heard things about you guys. Uh, you know, uh, can I see the real script? I'm like, you got the real script, though. Honestly, you're like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> As of now, you do. <laughs> I like that, though. It's, I mean, I, I've never heard of it before, but I've gotten to discussions in the scripts like that before, really. But that's. I like that. Just be just again because it throws your own cast off for the ones that just weren't involved in that scene or those scenes, and it just switches some things up. And it, you guys made it like all of that, and you made it work. Like making it work. I'm just like, holy! Like when I seen all this shit, I'm like, holy shit! Wow. Yeah. No. It took a lot of uh, tiptoeing, and uh, like a couple of times, we just got playing, playing lucky. Like certain people walk like, oh crap! And like, and unfortunately, they they just weren't paying attention. Like, oh. Fine. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> yep, yep, man, wow, that's great. I love stuff it like is. that. It is, and it again, it looked like a great freaking time. It definitely looked like a great freaking time. Oh, I man. mean, you get to play dress up, you get to play pretend and just become something else or somebody else. I mean, what, what's what's bad about that? Oh, I know. I mean, and I loved my character in that one. Like, it was essentially like, oh my god, I feel like I'm like like Shaggy from Scooby Doo's like love child. And like, and I'm like, I'm so gonna run home with this one because I mean, I love Scooby Doo, and so I was like, so I get to kind of almost play. Ah, there what's up, hey, what's buddy? How you doing? That's my boy. I love you, buddy. How you doing? Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, I, just, I had to stop by, man. Mike McGlynn's going to be on. Oh, yeah, not hear your voice. Oh, yeah. Dude, you having a good time? I'm sorry to stop you mid sentence, man. I wanted to come in and say, hey. Oh, no, please <laughs> interrupt anytime. You know me. I, I gab and I gab and I gab. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're the man. You're the man of the hour. You should be. Exactly. This is, this is, this, what he just said is what you should do when you come on episodes like this, people, is. Talk, talk about yourself, talk about what you got coming up, show people your personality. That's going to make people yeah. really want to look at your content, whatever it is, or listen to your content, whatever it is, and kind of know more about you by, you know, selling yourself on the show. I mean, like a hooker, yeah. not like worst damn over there or Mick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> you got to like gotta do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you say so. Sure. You say so. I don't like feet, but a lot of other people do. <laughs> <laughs> what, is that a knock on Quentin Tarantino? No, no, no. No. That's some bullshit right there. Don't be knocking on my boy right there. I love it. Because you like feet too? Is that why? I like Margot Robbie's feet. It's <laughs> <laughs> Margot Robbie. I guess that's fair. I'm not a foot guy myself, but hey, you like what you like. I respect it. <laughs> You love it. You love that. You love their feet. I don't. I almost wish I did, but I did. I just. I'm good. Because we're I mean, live. I'm gonna go with. I go with their personality. I like to know who they are inside first. So he's going right to getting inside of them. I like where you see where he's headed. <laughs> so he, he he said inside. He, he didn't say in the heart or nothing. He just said inside of him. He likes to get inside of him first. Well, well, I mean, he he's loving horror movies over here, so maybe he's slashing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's trying to get him inside out first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, damn, I walked through that one. Yep. <laughs> yep. You really? You didn't walk into that one. You like hard charged. You're he's, like, I'm gonna run into this one. He 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 seen where the line was. He was like, let's just let's just step. Let's just go. <laughs> Keep going. Just, We're gonna keep I'm going. Gonna run right over this one. Yeah. 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 There's a little more. I know. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> See what happens when I show up here, Mike. <laughs> oh man, we got nothing done. No, we did. We 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 were already talking some slasher nerds. We talked a few things, Mick. Talk oh no, I no idea. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, How's the cool. filming going, dude? <laughs> Where How's are you filming going, going bro? Oh, film's going really oh, good. There we go. I'll be filming with Brian Bremer uh, this weekend from Pumpkinhead. Nice. Yes. And, uh, nice. I'm really looking forward to that. He seems like a really nice guy. Uh, I'm definitely really excited about him. And, uh, yes. uh, I think it was uh, two weekends ago uh, we filmed with Diana Prince, uh, Darcy the Mill Girl from Joe Bob. Nice. Yep. Nice. She, she ended up being really awesome, too. Really sweet, really nice and friendly. Very nice. cool. Yeah. I love to hear it. Yeah, I mean, we've been very blessed on, like, like I, I was telling them earlier, like, uh, this whole entire film set, like, I'm actually, like, almost getting a little too concerned. It's like, everything's just been going too well. Like, I haven't had that big time bomb uh, blow up, like, oh, and here we go. <laughs> Here's our panic mode, like. Like we haven't really had one yet, and that really scares me. It scares the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen, but I'll, I'll guarantee you it's going to be smaller than you're used to. Won't be as bad as you think. Knock on wood, of course. But also because this is your third film together with Dave, and I think by the time you're at your third film together, and yeah, you guys are running the show, it's kind of like it, it. It really has to be something disastrous happening. It's not something that you guys are going to cause, knock on wood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You guys have gel, you gel together, you work together. Like, of course, anything can happen. Tensions can rise. People can be crazy or whatever. But I think you guys have just been working together so long. It's like in the groove. So it's like it, it, it does get easier each passing movie, you know? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. You know- that's one thing you gotta love about Dave. You know, when Dave, uh, like, you know, uh, finds the people that he likes uh, uh, to work with, uh, he keeps them close to his heart and his chest, and guarantee you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna see him back again and again and again. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and he's getting bigger and bigger. And I gotta tell you, I am. I've been so stoked to watch you guys grow. Oh, you know. Um, and, and just, just to have like, just from like acquaintanceship to friendship, you know, like even before, like when you were filming bloody summer camp and like to be able to get to know you guys and like, uh, just kind of see how you guys do it and then see where you guys go. You guys are, when I talk about filmmaking, especially independent filmmaking, I use you guys quite often as examples of when you're doing independent filmmaking, right. Uh-huh. You know, and I, I know I know a lot of people argue that, and I have I have stances on things in filmmaking that are different, and a lot of people are just like, "Well, throw the rule book out the window," and I'm like, "No, nah, you don't want to do that." But, and I know you guys don't, but <laughs> you know, you can tell by how good your films look. But my, you know, my point with that is like when I watch you guys work, and and coming from a Hollywood background, not just an independent one, I'm like these guys have it right, but they're incorporating the things that we need to know about filmmaking in the indie world the perfect way because they're advancing with each movie. Each movie, regardless of how much it makes or where it is, it's an independent picture. You know, I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just not adding that. That's not my thinking here. My thinking is the the putting things together side, the, the technical aspects. So you guys, each one, it's getting more well-rounded better you guys you guys have some of the best um like crowdfunding i've ever seen you guys are out there doing it you do the leg work you and dave especially you and your wives i cannot take anything away from your mm-hmm. wives nothing oh. enough there they may not be in the forefront but they are a hundred percent killing it in mm-hmm. the back not in the back. i don't want to say the background but you know what i we mean know what like, you mean not, like- don't don't right dig in yourself in any holes before your wife starts yelling at you, and my wife starts yelling at me, and Chris gets yelled at, and Mike gets yelled at because of you. Never. Just stop. Just stop. No, Mike won't get yelled oh. at. He's too nice. Oh yeah, no, like, no. I mean, like you know, they're, they're definitely there, and they definitely know it. Uh, uh, honestly, they they are um, you know, a big part of it with Jamie. She she doesn't like being on the forefront. She likes being in the background, so she's actually okay with that. Like you know, just hearing the uh, nod or her in her name mentioned, like you know, means the world to her. Uh, uh, you know, Amber's like more of just like, yeah, I want to do my special effects and I just want to kill people and and um, <laughs> I'm, 
<laughs> but I mean, she gives a lot of foresight into like a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the directing too with Dave. Uh, the two of them mesh very well together. They go back and forth. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I just step in whenever I need to break them up into their perspective corners. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Most mostly for Dave's safety. <laughs> yep. Dude, I, and oh, Dave, man, Dave is, and I, I can't wait. I'm going to be up there visiting you guys on set the ninth. Yeah. Nice. For the Dugathon. <laughs> yep. I can't wait to see that. And and Dave told me too because like. We've been corresponding all summer. He's like, you need to get out to the set. And I was like, I do, because I missed the premiere of Go Away. Mm -hmm. And I, because I got a leg infection, of course, that morning. Mm. So, so funny story for you, because now we can talk about it. And I know I'm taking over Sturdy Show. I love you. No, no, sorry. This, sorry. Part, this is all part of this conversation. <laughs> it works. So they had a, a big premiere at the Alamo Draft House here in Winchester, Virginia. And, if go away now i've been looking i love lady summer camp and i love these guys so i've been really looking forward to go away for a long time and i've been like you know i got to even talk to mukes at carolina this year and like so like we really got into it and i got a lot of stuff and it was funny because it was originally supposed to premiere at carolina fear fest so i was like uh -huh. oh cool i was like i'm not gonna be able to watch it there but i will definitely be at the thing and then of course some Post-production stuff happened. It couldn't premiere there, so they waited for the Alamo. I was up all night the night before, was not feeling well, did not understand why, and then the next morning, my leg is, like, beat red, blown out to hell, and I'm like, I've never had an infection in the leg before. I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm like, let's get to the fucking hospital. So we get to the hospital, and then, of course, leg infection. I'm like, can I go to a movie premiere? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> You're in incredible amount of pain i was like and i'm on a lot of drugs <laughs> we just had a bear looking disheveled like i'm in and my leg looking all gangrene <laughs> would have been poor timing <laughs> damn but i do miss it and i'm but i i did see the pictures and again watching you guys grow has just been truly a privilege and i love you guys Oh, we love you too, man. I'm like, and dude, you've always been a big giant support of us, man. We really appreciate that because, I mean, you know as well as I do, man. One hand, uh, you know, scratches there, one's up back. And like I said, it's, you know, it's just because of all you all. Like, you know, that also helped get us a platform, let, you know, let people know about us. And they get to know us on a better level. It's not just through a post saying, like, hi, I'm this person. Here's my crowdfunder, you know. They actually get to see like a face behind some of the people who are working on that one and really get to see that look you know we are good people so i think that was one of our big successes i think for slash nurse was all the live feeds dave and i would come on and do and stuff and we would do a lot of stupid silly antics and stuff like you know if you donate while we we're on our live feed dave would take a shot i'm not a big drinker i decided to do it one night and and then, uh, of course, I the one night I decided to do, I forgot I had a podcast. And I'm going to someone else's podcast drunk. As <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I was I was with Dave and everyone else, so I kind of made it just a me podcast. Too. Uh, it's a Slasher 15 podcast now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Smart right there, though. Just somebody else. Uh, then we had a yes. podcast. Shit, shit. As a podcast host, when you're just like, oh, shit, surprise. Everybody's over at one house. Fuck. And they all want to be on here? Cool. Because Mike's drunk? Hey, you... fine. That's fine. That's legit, dude. And, and That's awesome. I'm right dude. there. With, like, it's so much fun to watch you, too, because you're you're a trip, dude. Like, oh, when you go on these things. like I love his energy. Have you been watching their lives? When I get a chance to, I do. Yeah. It, it, they're so much fun, man. They really are. Like, you, get, you guys really do a fun job with them. Like, I, I really do, like, where you guys go with... Uh, those lives and it keeps people so informed and to be thanking everybody every day for their contributions like that makes a big difference yeah it really does it really does and it makes people want to actually back things and maybe even back it twice just because like people are so freaking friendly let me buy one for myself and buy one for whoever type of deal right. just because just because of stuff like that and not even like yes of course you're trying to sell a movie to you know, raise funds for the film, but at the same time, you're not do you're not promoting it as like I'm just trying to sell you something. It's like, listen, I want you guys to be a part of helping us build this, help this grow. Mm -hmm. You guys are gonna be a part of this and all that. And that's a big different than back my film, buy my stuff, buy my this, buy my that. And it's there's ways of doing it, and you guys are doing it the right way. Uh, you guys are definitely doing it the right way. 
I appreciate that a lot. Thank yeah, you. I mean, we always want to give a feeling about us that, like, you know, uh, that, you know, when you donate to us, you're donating to one, a group that's going to make the film, it's going to come out. And when every time, every every cent that's given to us is spent on the film. Trust me, most of the time, we still find ways that we're like, yep, yeah, we're going to have to tap into our own wallets just a little bit here. Hmm. <laughs> this gives us a few things, uh, but every cent goes to uh, making the film the best film possible. Um, I mean, and because, you know, uh, I like it's, it's, it's even Dave's mentality. If we're not going to do better than we, what we did in our last film, then what are we trying to do here then? You know, let's, let's try to do better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then on top of that, you guys are really, really, really personable. Personable, yeah. Super mm-hmm. personable, which again helps a lot versus, hey, buy my movie. And it's like, okay, I buy my movie. And you guys will have a conversation with people on post. I see that all the time, just stuff like that. And like when you guys do your lives, you're answering questions, you're actually conversating with people, not just saying whatever you guys are trying to discuss, whether it's promoting the movie or whatever it is. You guys make it fun and, intera- and interactive. And again, you guys can learn. I mean, that, that and that's just for content creators across the board. If you're doing a live type of thing, you need to be very interactive for people to want to stick around. Even if they don't really care what you're talking about, if you're interactive and make it fun, they may just stick around just because. Mm-hmm. You guys do an excellent job at that. You guys do such a good job at that. The freaking drinking games and all that other crazy ass shit you guys just. <laughs> but to sell them too. To yes. sell yes. the shots. It's genius. And all go towards the, 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 the event. You know, like that's that's great. It's, it's, it's a great idea. It's smart marketing. It's smart because who doesn't want to see someone, whoever it is, on the internet getting drunk and make a making a fool of themselves? <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> want to see that? And say it's five bucks for a shot, and you're like, okay, so five fifteen bucks right here for Mike to take a shot for the movie. Boom, that's three shots, right? That's three shots just for fifteen bucks from the three of us. Now imagine when they're on a live with 20, 30 people watching. He's yeah. he needs to be careful. <laughs> Because I feel like it's always him that it, people target. Oh well, yeah, it is mostly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not really a drinker. Like I did it once. Okay. I mean, uh, it, it, I barely made it out alive. <laughs> Dude, you, you, yeah, you get targeted quite a bit. You get targeted so much, and I understand why because you are the fun guy, mm-hmm. and I think. I think I can speak to that on my show because, like, I, I think people see me as sort of like a fun, lovable guy. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes it not a target, not for bullying or anything, but I think no, no. when you're with your friends, I think it's funnier to just like fuck with the fun guy. Let's see what the fun guy will do. Let's see what we'll have fun with. But we love yeah. him, we'll protect him and we'll be there for him. But yeah, like let's fuck with him a little bit. Okay. I, th- I, I not me. I, I get overprotective of you though. And I'm like, leave that, Mike alone. I think it's that make, and then I also think it's a mix of because I'm this type of friend, similar to that, but also like all right, now I know if I do this to him, he's going to get real loud and real crazy, and I'm going to find it hilarious. So that's why I'm going to mess with him in this situation. And then in this situation, this friend is going to act like this, which is going to be hilarious. Like, I'm like, I think about it like that. And then, boom. So I just, you know, it's kind of like spinning the wheel, picking your target. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is like the way you see Dave and I act, it's really how we are. Like, even if, if you're around, around us in person, you're around us mm-hmm. all the time. They're always reacting to the exact same. We're really like an Abbott in uh, uh, Costello. Uh, it's like, you know, it is, I think it's the reason why I get, all, I, I get picked on. I, I get that uh, that Costello kind of love. Like, oh, he's just so fun to, to poke <laughs> and, fun and have fun with, you know, because he'll take it and, and, and he'll have fun with it and, and, and I'll get a good laugh and everyone wins in the end. Dave gets an even a bigger laugh from it, uh, you know, because it's against me. So uh, everyone wins. Everyone's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Ah, uh, one day, one day, I will enjoy this. <laughs> one day, I will be making a movie at some point. I gotta at some point. It's too much fun watching and listening to you guys talk about this. <laughs> uh, it is a lot. Making of- a man. <laughs> they're killing it. Me? I got a good. One. I, I was just gonna say they're killing it. They're doing a good job. Uh, because you guys are hard based, you guys do it, and and Dave, I don't know how he writes so many scripts so goddamn fast. Uh, <laughs> like he's just a smart guy; he's got a lot of great ideas, and he puts them down on paper. He really stays focused. I got to give it to him. Uh, and I, I love how again these these guys are doing their own, making their own stories. They're not 
doing a fan films and things. No disrespect, because I do enjoy the fan films, don't get me wrong, but I'm really enjoying seeing these independent um, originals. I mean, now is the best. Originals. I mean, it's one reason Flash Nerds did so well is like, it's an original IP, like, and it's not something you see over and over again. You don't see a lot of mask uh, solo female uh, killers. You know, like, you know, no, you don't. You know, like in maybe like you know, uh, uh, like, you know in the groups like, uh, uh, like uh, the uh, strangers or something like that and stuff. But you know, as far as like just being like its own standalone, like almost like Voorhees, uh, uh, SK or or, or mm -hmm. kind of like standalone female, there's not really many you can think of. When, and I think I really think that's part of the charm is like it still pays homage how everyone likes, but it's a new IP similar to what I think helped out with Art the Clown. It was like his original IP. It was something different, something new, and something that could stand on its own. Like you know, and you could actually show it to the world because you know when you do uh, fan made films, you know, it's free streaming or no streaming, uh, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean. And once it's made, you can't really do anything with it besides let out for free for everyone to be watched. And don't get me wrong, it's it, it's good uh, publicity. I mean, it's a great way to get yourself seen, uh, especially yeah. up and get some attention on you. Uh, but, you know, on the flip side, though, you can only take that film to so many audiences, uh, you know, versus, you know, doing your own original IPs. You can at least get distribution, get all some streaming sites, get a bigger, general, more broader audience um, as well. Mm. Um, you know, but yeah, I'm with you though. I mean, I've got no hate against uh, fan made films well whatsoever. I mean, I, I I enjoy a good chunk of them. Um, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, like I, I, with Slash of Fifteen, I think it's uh, it's always going to be like original. Uh, I, uh, I mean, you know, you know, like as Mick said, Dave's just Dave's a really good writer. He just something gets popped in his head, and he can just write already half the story for for the film like in one sitting, just about. Um, and then just tweaks in the rest uh, on the way and stuff. And anytime that man's ever had to do a rewrite for a film, I swear to God, like it happened a few times in Blaze Summer Camp, and the scenes came out to be even better than what they were originally supposed to be because we had to make uh, rewrites. Uh, so nice. whenever, whenever the man says he's going to rewrite something, I always feel better about it. I'm like, all right, it's just going to make a better film now. <laughs> See, I like That's that. Awesome. I like that. And and that's always a lovely thing like when you're on set too and just speaking to the idea of like like talented writers and directors and stuff like that who can take their scripts and now I am not I'm not that. I'm a producer. So like that or I was, but um so watching them is is such a cool um like scenario just to unfold right in front of you because it's so odd for a director to just walk away and you're like, yeah, people are creative all the time. People come up with stuff but to really watch a good director who can critique himself and say, this isn't working or this isn't going to work because now I'm on set and I see it. Mm -hmm. So let me change something. That's somebody. Now you can go too far the other way and have somebody who's questioning themselves too much. And then it's just yeah. shit. But like, that's not Dave. That's not Dave. Like every movie, even though I haven't seen getaway, I've seen, I've seen footage. I've, you know, and things like that. Like, so, I get the idea of like what changes now I'm seeing uh, not footage, but I'm seeing promotional stills mm -hmm. that you guys are posting from uh, slasher nurse. And I'll tell you the cinematography in this movie is, is way better than any of the other movies. And that's not, that's not putting down. Oh, fuck. Either up. of the other movies. I just watched bloody summer you camp know? today and that movie looks beautiful. So if there's an improvement on that, that's a wonderful fucking thing. I'm not mad about that at all. I don't think it's, it is an improvement, but I think it comes from a place of um, it, it's 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 you're just going to get better as you go. Yeah. Knowledge. Always. You learn a lot more. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's who Dave and that's who Mike and everybody is. like to see Mike, even to see you uh, running around a few years ago on those fan films, but to see your name in the articles for these movies that you're putting out, these features. Yeah. <laughs> that are getting out there and people see and people know and, and, and they're anticipated. And it's only going to grow from there, man. So keep it up, dude. Oh, yes. thank you, brother. <laughs> Just remember the little guys when you're up there. Oh, man. <laughs> Forget the people, man. I mean, y'all y'all family, man. You know that. Oh, we love you, Bill. Appreciate it, man. Oh, Yo, yeah. I, I'm just excited now for the next project. 
because it it, it, it's amazing the amount you got now. And just like he said, it's a constant evolution. I mean, the pursuit of, you know, just being great at what you're doing and just constantly learning and changing. And you guys are doing it on the fly at the times, too, when you need to. So kudos, kudos for sure. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with everything he just said with that. I agree with everything he just said with that. So, Mike, uh, can I ask you a question? Is that cool, uh, Sturdy? Would you mind? Oh, go ahead, uh, Mike. So, like, you're now you're finishing up Slasher Nurse. Mm-hmm. You've worked on a lot of horror in your career. Not not just horror. You've worked on some action. You've worked on uh, thrillers. Things. What is something as a producer after Slasher Nurse? Like if it's a project for you to get off the grounds, you know, whether it be with Dave or whoever else, what what's a genre you'd really like to tackle? Maybe not next, but like coming up. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. What I would love to tackle, um, it's still like funny enough, it'd still be in the horror realm. Uh, but I would love to do a slasher, like and like some kind of like abandoned like a uh, ski resort. Uh, it's just the whole the red blood going against the white snow and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, kind of like take a new modern predator. <laughs> uh, that I, I would love uh, to do. Uh, at some point, I'd like to finish writing my script. I'm actually writing uh, my own. Uh, it's, it's a straight uh, uh, cliche, uh, uh, a corny uh, a horror comedy called Are You Effing Serious? <laughs> <laughs> love it. Um, no, I mean, it. Just, it's just like it's pretty much a scary movie uh, meets Friday the Thirteenth, pretty much. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That's the way to do it, my friend. And I can't wait to see it. Absolutely. You got any parts for a giant in there? Oh, I'll make a <laughs> you. Big Manhattan's awesome. making his uh, return to acting. I guess. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's good. That's gonna be me. It's gonna be Mike. Like reaches this upper stratosphere as a producer, and it's just gonna be like. I'm, you know, if he's like the Quentin Tarantino one day, I'm going to be like, uh, or no, no, I'll be like the Danny DeVito to his like Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> Call me up and it's like, you know, hey man, I'm just do my show. Hey, yeah, I got a movie going on. Yeah, I'll be right there. Like, I know who I'm playing in it. Like, I, I know what I am and it's fine and I'm good with it. Like, that's just, I'm good with living that life. <laughs> that's okay. No, I do. I, I love seeing you guys all the time. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I love filmmaking. I don't, I'm not sad that I left it. Um, sometimes I miss the days. I know I'm real older now. I'm not in my 20s anymore, so it sucks. But uh, like when you guys are up there all night, and I'm just like, I just wish. I wish I could still do it. I don't know if I can anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I just, it, it's so much fun to watch, especially to watch fun, good filmmaking. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but if it makes you feel any better, man, a lot of those late night uh, film nights I'm on, if I could see you, I could see you through uh, you like, relax on the couch, I'm like, God damn, I just want that right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you ain't, you ain't getting that. <laughs> You're the man. You got to keep it up. I know, that recliner TV just looks so promising. <laughs> I love it. The footage for the day, right? Yeah, we can call it early, right? Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> you go back. Fuck, we got so many reshoots. <laughs> oh, I uh, sleep. Well, what's everybody doing next weekend? Uh, mm. Next weekend, we film with Brian Bremer uh, from Pumpkinhead. Um, mm. We're gonna do all. No, I'm not like what, what are we, let's go do our reshoots. <laughs> So. Next weekend we'll do it. <laughs> I, I am excited to see that though, especially you guys got a lot of celebrities in this one. You got a lot of horror, uh, horror heads in there. Oh yeah, we have, and, uh, like, and then later on in September we got uh, Beverly Randolph from Return of the Living Dead uh, uh, coming on board, and we already filmed with Felissa Rose and uh, Jim Crutt, um, and then Brian and, and Dar. Oh, oh, we just filmed with Darcy uh, uh, two weekends ago. That was awesome. It was all oh, get out. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we, nice. we get to it in. Uh, probably we don't need any reshoots, uh, but we should hopefully be all wrapped up by the end of September. Hopefully, nice. That's awesome. But, Very cool. 
there might be a few aesthetic shots, whatever. But here's some fun things on the way. We uh, like, like I filmed at the hospital. We ended up being a lot of fun. We ended up uh, getting uh, two of the staff members involved. One of them was like the front desk, and she was just absolutely adorable. She was like, "I got y'all. Whatever you all want, I am here. You want me scared? You want me serious? You want me angry? You uh, you, you want you want me just to be happy, go lucky? Like I got you." Put me in your film. Put me in your film. And funny enough, we actually had to do a, a, a scene at the front desk where she was working at uh, with our actor. We we're like, you know what? You want to stay in the scene? She's like, you know I do. And she just got all happy. And like in between takes, she's like, watch out, Oprah. There's a new girl in town. <laughs> <laughs> she was so funny. I, we, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, then one of the security guards ended up stepping in uh, to uh, to put to play uh, security in our film, uh, and she was and she was loving it. Right? She's like, "I'm going Hollywood." I'm going. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's their energy, and they're, and they're just they're just so excited to be a part of it. And then they were like, "Yeah, you'll give us information." Like, what do you mean? We want your information. I was like, "Well, you know, we're going to give you an IMDb credit." Like, oh, I'm getting an IMDb. Credit. <laughs> you would have thought Christmas came out before him. It was absolutely mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, yeah, they were just so cool, just so happy about it, and like it was just a great time. And the whole entire staff were just so freaking awesome there. Like, you know, because you would imagine, like, you know, working these kind of places, you kind of have to work around them. Uh, they were, they were like the opposite. They were like, "Hey, like, you need to film somewhere? Just let us know. We'll move everything out. You need to get out of the way. We'll get out of the way. Go and get all your filming done. Just let us know when you're done. We'll, we'll move on back." And like, oh well, we don't want to keep you from your work, though. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll try to work with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That is cool. That is cool, though. I mean, to where you built those bonds with businesses and people like yeah. that, to where you can go there, yeah. shoot some footage, and also be respectful, 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 <laughs> and polite, and all that other, you know, all that, all that other stuff, which we've had on previous podcast episodes, just about going up and asking if you can do it. You know, hey, say. is it okay if we shoot here? And maybe you make a deal financially. I don't know. Maybe you make a deal. Hey, I'll shoot a commercial for you guys if we could shoot a scene here. I. Whatever it is, or maybe they like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, because they love movies. And oh, yeah, we I, actually uh, did. Uh, we did that for a few people uh, before. We did it for uh, the camp uh, after COVID. We actually ran a crowdfunder, and because Dave is such the awesome uh, squill guy that he is, uh, on our third place from camp uh, crowdfunder, uh, anyone who bought a Blu-ray, he took five dollars out of that purchase and donated it to the camp. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, nice. See, that's stuff like that is so cool. Uh, yeah, so then, uh, and it, even uh, with Slash Nurse, uh, the Haunted Farm, we filmed that with uh, Jim Crutt. Um, mm. uh, uh, we actually are going to be filming a promo video for uh, for them for their next uh, Halloween haunt uh, uh, for uh, their uh, publicity to show. <laughs> See, nice and cool. and and that stuff like that, like people, I think people forget about the whole barter system thing. They just think finances all the time. Like, there's other ways mm-hmm. where you can kind of, you know what. You guys want to shoot here at this location? Cool, but I kind of need a commercial, so let's let's work together. And shit, <laughs> it worked together. It helped. It worked for both of them, I'm sure. And I I, I just love stuff. I love hearing stuff like that. I love hearing yeah. stuff like that. And you only get that from the indie stuff. You don't get that from the big names like Hollywood because they're just here's a bunch of money. Yeah, go do your thing. Grab a studio. <laughs> That's not the same. It's not as meaningful as you building this bond or this relationship with these wherever you guys shoot at. Let's just say in your area, your town or your city or whatever, just in that just in that place alone. It's like, OK, we could do 20 movies here if we wanted to, because we made all these, you know, we were attached with all so many, all these people cool with all these people. And it's just it's I, I commend you guys for that. Okay. I commend you guys for that because that has to be I'm sure that sometimes it has to be tough just okay. dealing with people in general. Oh, uh- it definitely can be, but then there are great times that follow that that make it all worth the while. Like with Boy Summer Camp, uh, the actual counselors who do work at that camp mm-hmm. found out about the movie and everything, uh, and so uh, Dave uh, gave them a copy to watch. And uh, not only did they absolutely love the movie, they actually went out the next day and they all started taking like funny still shots of like scenes from the movie, like oh, doing nice. it, and they sent it to us. Uh, uh, well, they're showing about you know, showing us how much they really enjoy the movie. I mean, those things mean like the world uh, to us. Um, you know, it, it's like you know, you know, you can throw uh, you can throw ten horrible reviews at us, but that one that says, "Hey, I caught it. I thought it was a great film. It's, I want to go back and watch." Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, you know, I've even had some people uh, re uh, like to reach out to us and say, hey, man, this is some, your movie, uh, like Boy Summer Camp is one of those movies that when I go away to the cabin uh, with, 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 with my girl for the weekend, this movie is one of the movies I grab to take with, with me to watch at the cabin while we're away. I mean, that's like the biggest badge of honor I can hear. I was like, you're going to a cabin to go hang out and watch horror movies. Mm -hmm. And our movie made them cut. I mean, you know you know what this this would work for it too because like say you bring your friday the 13th you bring your cabin in the woods and maybe a few others maybe an evil dead you know you bring those some, some a few that are scary and then you have that balance of that horror comedy with this one and it's like okay now you can bring the fear down kind of relax if you need to you kind of calm mm -hmm. the fear down relax the night again see some cool kills have some fun laughs but get a cool horror slasher all in the same all in the same vein it's just not as scary as some i'm not saying friday the 13th is scary but as some others may be. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, like while others try to build on the intensity, we kind of mix it in with the ha ha's and, and the mm -hmm. instead. But I've always been a big fan of that. I mean, like horror comedy is my favorite realm of any kind of genre, uh, just because I love mixing in my laughs and like with, with really good kills. Like you know, I want yeah. to my ass off one minute and then just going, oh damn! <laughs> you know, like, it gets you. Much more because like you're, you're laughing, you know your guards down, you're, you're, mm -hmm. and then bam, you just see something hit like oh, snap! <laughs> it's happened. Shit, that just happened right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Let me pull That's up awesome, your uh, indie go go for slasher nurse. Yeah, I, oh. I, I thought the uh, the little hair, uh, what was it, curling iron or hair like uh, yeah, curling hair iron. Iron fucking kill was kind of unique. I was like, oh shit. Oh, but, yeah, thanks. Uh, funny enough, uh, the same vape I have in my hand is actually uh, what the uh, actor used. Like he he, uh, he sucked on my vape, and then after like the uh, the we, we pulled the iron out while I was in there, he would lightly let the smoke out of his mouth. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. Hey, but just to show how awesome of a producer I am, I knew that he was coming up, and I even asked him, "All right, what's your favorite flavor?" He goes, "Uh, grape." I'm like, "All right, grape." So I went on my way. I went to the, to the the vape store, and I found a, a, a grape flavored for him to put nice. in. Nice. Damn right. Because I can. That, that, no, that that shit. That's dedication right there. That's dedication right there. Turn of a living dead slash it. Okay. I can't wait to see this. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited to work with, with Beverly. I got to meet her one time at um, at a, a New Year's Eve uh, a horror con a couple of years ago. She was just absolutely just so sweet, so nice, and so friendly. Uh, just definitely seems so like you know like warm, like, like, like you know like someone you could tell you're gonna have a lot of fun to work with. Uh, and she's really got great fun to that. Dude, I love it. I think this is amazing. Yeah, hell yeah! Great, uh, Mike. You, you guys are doing great work, man. Yeah. Oh, Keep it up. <laughs> go away, poster. Mm -hmm. Dude, so much fun stuff. I can't wait. I, I can't wait. I want to get my Blu-ray. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. We need both. I need mine for um. Look at that in-character video shoutouts. That's cool. Limited edition. Oh, you guys want to hear a funny thing about Return of Slasher Nurse? Yes. Ooh. My wife is going to be in the movie. Nice. She's going to do a small little video roll. She she did the Indiegogo. We did the Indiegogo to support, and she got a small little roll. Nice. Congratulations to your better Sorry. half. Lady Manhattan. Lady Manhattan. <laughs> She wants to. She she's interested. She's always wanted to act. So like this was like, oh, this is cool. Like this something like act, but like know that she's not like doing that. Like that's not her what she goes for. But like she was like, this is cool. I get to like do something. I get to be in a movie in some yeah. way. You no, know, that's so really cool. cool. I that's was like, really I'm gonna ruin it for you. I'm just gonna be just. I'm gonna send them too. I'm gonna send them you doing the scene, and me in a wig doing the scene. <laughs> if they don't Yo, shoot you know, me, you know, I'm coming you know after what? Mike. You know what? They they should do that and then put yours in the deleted scenes. <laughs> like look at this. This almost made the film. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good this looper. Is our, this is our runner up. <laughs> oh my god, Mike, can you, I come down this like it doesn't even have to be the set. Can I just come visit you guys one day and it's just me reading for every role and I'll just switch out shirts. And it's like me sneaking in. 
during casting to read for every role and then just like throw it up in like the DVD extras of like Mick Manhattan won't leave us alone. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it's just like shots of me like behind a tree while you guys are filming. <laughs> think they see me? <laughs> no, he's not taking paparazzi shots. He's just literally standing behind a tree waiting for us to call him over. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, Mick, come here. <laughs> hey, if, if, if it works for that hospital staff. A couple of the girls really wanted to be in the film. We're like, you know what? I'm, we're, we're done fighting this. You want to be in the film? Yes. Get on in. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. That's so cool. You guys are missing one big thing about, and oh, I actually, I missed the first 20 minutes, so I'm not sure if you asked them, but you should. Because there's one person I know who has an amazing collection of I mean, everything movies. Man. Just ask the man some questions. And it's not just, I mean, Superman. This Superman memorabilia is amazing. This oh, guy is one of the biggest Superman fans I've ever met. <clears throat> you know, I actually I gotta go Bar, back to the conversation everything. we had, and we never we never linked up just being busy and stuff, but I do still want to do this because we were gonna do a you were gonna do a tour. This is a while back. I think it was back around. What the hell was it? Oh yeah, for uh, for that uh, uh, for that uh, uh, telethon. It was back around that when me and you discussed it, though. It was back it was around the telethon that, that he did the tour, though. No, I know, but he's gonna come on Horror Research Thirty and do it with like all the horror stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One night, and we just never did it. But I do, I do want to connect on you one night for that because that would be fun as hell. Talk oh, some horror, of course. Promote your stuff. And see your dope horror collection that you want to show. Everything, everything is just like, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, pretty much the upstairs is like the downstairs here, except it being except it's all horror set comic book. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. That's beautiful. Amazing. That's that's a love right there. The Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah, I, I got buddy. Uh, life, uh, I'll, I'll take you over here. I got a life size Spider Man of uh, and uh, Deadpool and Rocket Raccoon. Oh my. Gosh, dope! This is wow. awesome. This is like a grown man's dream right here. I'm not even saying a kid. Screw them. They don't got jobs or nothing. And, uh, this is a grown man's dream. The baby you got a Punisher pig thing on the brick. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I, mean, I got autographs like all around here. Uh, I got Guardians. I got Christopher Reeves' uh, Superman autograph. I got Bill Bigsby, Stan Lee, and Lou Ferrigo signing. <laughs> Shit. Uh, a Hulk poster. I got a Wound Cat's Greatest American Hero. Uh, awesome. Bending Patches, Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh awesome. my gosh! I yeah, love awesome. I love God. the fandom. I love the fandom with people like that. And then, of course, your wife is into this stuff too because it's all over the place, which is even better. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. she she's a big nut and lover of both of uh, comic book horror. Uh, and we and we both like almost the same kind of films. We're both really die hard slasher fans. Uh, there you go. Uh, I think her favorite is still probably Scream, uh, with Hatchie being a close second. For me, it's Hatch, and then probably Friday the Thirteenth. I like Very that. Nice. I like that. You flip flip flop. I think the we Hatchie. should get Mike. I think we should get Mike in on the charity event. Oh, we uh, definitely should get Mike in on the charity event. Oh, I'm as a matter of fact, the charity event would be a perfect time for the tour. Oh, actually, <laughs> we're doing. I, I, Give the tour. Uh, said, we're I, doing I, uh, we're doing casters for a cause again. Yes, oh, and we're but it's going to be a it's going to just be a like a one night event. It's going to oh, be a script right. reading. That's right on October thirteenth of Friday the thirteenth. Ooh, and yeah, so all proceeds go to charity. We're um, uh, we right now. I'm tr I'm in touch with uh, Stephen City, the family drive in. They're doing a uh, a fundraiser for their screen to fix their screen, so we thought we would do that as the charity. I just got to get the okay for that, and then I'm gonna put out the flyer. No, oh, nice. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm game. Sweet, mm -hmm. love to have you on board, man. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Dude, especially for a good for a good cause. Yeah, that'd be a good time, man. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all local for us, so not these guys. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, but it's a fun theater. I'll be down there in um, May. 
Are you coming? Are you going to come to Carolina Fear Fest? Because Mike and I hang out at Carolina Fear Fest. That's that's yeah. my buddy right there. Yes, yes. We, we we're talking about it. We're planning it. Um, she's probably going to do like the planning, planning, and like the whole structure planning. I'm just saying things. But so like my wife. Yeah, you know how that stuff works. They just kind of just take it over and just make sure everything gets done. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. way ahead of time too. I don't understand. Yeah. My wife's the same way. She does all the itinerary. She handles all the tickets and everything. She just tells me, here, take this, scan that, or right, walk in, go. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Do you need a map, stupid? No, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> what did you need me to get again? <laughs> you didn't even walk out the door yet. <laughs> it happened to the best of us, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, it happened to the best of us. Now she'll send me, like, pictures of the exact item she wants. <laughs> and, <laughs> which, it helps. It helps. Right. Sometimes it's the same item, but you know the same name, just a different brand or a different color or whatever. And it's wrong. I'm like, all right, well, send me the whole picture. Now I know. Yes. No. That's always a weird thing about us. She can always go to any of the booths, especially when like Dave and Amber, because she'll always go walk off with Amber while me and Dave will usually hang out, like running the booth. Uh, and they'll always come back like, yeah, I found this. Uh, like you know, and I bought it for me. But when I walk around with Dave, I got to take photos of the item that I want to buy, send it to her, and then I got to play 20 questions with her on text message before I get the approval to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I just give my wife my money because I um, I can't control myself at horror conventions. <laughs> no. I have a problem like with that. Because I, I enjoy breathing. No, it's it's literally. I just ask her to hold it. I'm just like, can you just hold this for me? And she's like, why? And I'm just like, you you know why? <laughs> I'll spend it in five minutes. Yeah. And then get Bro. mad because you can't get some. Because I spent seventy dollars at a farmer's market the day before yesterday with the girl. I was like, God damn, it's getting expensive. I got some grass, <laughs> some mead, a cup of coffee, and some barbecue sauce. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> was sixty-seven dollars. It was it was twelve dollars. It was twelve dollars. Like sixty-seven dollars a bucket. The, the mead was honey mead. It was called Hades. It had a pepper tone to it, and it was like thirty-five dollars. So they were <laughs> half the budget. There you go. Yeah, she says she liked it. Listen, all right, here you go. <laughs> there you go. Have fun. There you go. That better quench her thirst for the next 24 hours at that price. Tag. Oh, she's been <laughs> sipping it like little, little bits at a time every day, just a little bit. And she today she's like, shit, I forgot. I want to marry some meat, some meat with this. I was like, I got the chicken tomorrow with that. Then. I got the chicken tomorrow. <laughs> we'll, go. we'll marinate some chicken thighs for that tomorrow. Get them baked up real nice. Yeah. There you go. I got it. I'm, I'm excited for dinner already. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 5 p.m. tomorrow yet? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Oh, now I'm thinking about air frying them. Mm. Oh, I love air frying. I love my air fryer. I miss it. <laughs> I still use mine, so I'm good. I don't miss it. You don't miss I'll it. Keep getting fat. <laughs> Welcome to Cooking with Sir Sturdy. <laughs> Cooking with Sir Sturdy. Hey, listen. Oh, we got to do an episode where we do like a bloody va- lava cake out of the air fryer or something. How about a, ho- how about a Halloween live episode where we do, where we cook our favorite Halloween themed dishes? Ooh. Ooh. Eye of Newt. Hmm. I, was, I was just going to cook like terror Aki meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Like I was going with a pun, but you know, whatever. Oh, you want to get the eye of Newt? Go for it. Terror Aki. <laughs> remember this when he said all that. What? I like it. Oh shit, that was funny. It's great. Was funny. I, I just want to taste them. They're amazing. <laughs> I served them at parties. Or how about mummy dogs? We wrap okay. it up into things. Okay. And the okay. uh and that uh, was it the croissant, the Pillsbury croissant things. I know, I know them all. We we go all out on our Halloween parties. We we decorate everything. There you go. That's the good I, ha- I haven't had a Halloween party since uh the hats were big enough on my head in a cone shape. That they <laughs> <laughs> been that long since i've been to a halloween party i've been out to the bar on halloween 
and definitely showed up to work with the fucking eye makeup still on. That's what you did. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Everybody I'm looking at me. Right. What? What? Well, what? I'm, I'm going to let you gents finish up here. I'm going to run <clears> off because <throat> uh, i got to go edit my show. But uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for letting me on. Uh, Mark, Marcus. you're amazing. Oh, oh, thanks, dirty Chris. Love you guys. Yeah, whatever. Love you, bro. <laughs> go check out the scene snob, by the way, people. Go check it out. Absolutely. Dope podcast. Good talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Be Take well, care, brother. Go on, Mick. <laughs> that shit's funny. Yeah, I got an interview here in a little bit. Yes, yes, yeah. We're about to wrap this one up, and I'm sure you guys are going to want to connect, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. So we'll make that happen. Um sure. I'll get I'll get one information from the other via Facebook or email. But uh Mike, will you want to tell the people where they can find you and all that good stuff? Oh, the best place to find me is on uh Facebook. Uh you can always uh friend me. I'm a very open, very friendly guy. I pretty much accept any, anybody as long as you're not trying to uh sell me insurance or uh <laughs> Ask me to free your prince from some foreign country. Uh, if you don't feel sorry on that note, we'll, we'll probably get along great. <laughs> okay, so third message. Third message. The message is about life insurance. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, make sure you guys go check him out. And again, people, watch Bloody Summer Camp. Go back. There's still there's still time to go grab go away. So go in the uh, Indiegogo. While you're going to backslash your nurse, and then you scroll down some more, and grab the blue ray, of go- blue ray of go away for thirty bucks, and there you got. Then you can, you'll have all three by the time you know it's all said and done. You, I think you can still. I think I don't. Yes, you can buy Bloody Summer Camp from their website, which link is in the description. So make sure you guys go check that out as well. Nice. And you can also buy the original slasher nurse, which I do want to grab myself. Um, but yeah, you can grab the original slasher nurse on their website as well. So. Go check that out as well. See where Dave kind of started from. See how much he grew from that. Oh, yeah. That alone is dope, which, yeah, I think I'm going to have to grab that because I would like to do an episode about that just from there to where he is now. Oh, yeah. I mean, even just from Curse, his first film, The Bloody Summer Camp, I mean, you would almost say it's a day night difference. And uh, yeah. it's only gotten better. I get, uh, even uh, go away. Like, my parents actually came up for that premiere, and I didn't think my parents would like it as much as Bloody Summer Camp because they like more humor. Mm-hmm. And they actually end up liking Go Away even more. And they're like, wow, the everything was wow. just like the, the lighting was just really good, really crisp. Uh, you know, all the audio was just perfect, uh, down, down down to a T. And she's like, you know, this film was very solid across the board, honey. Um, and I think Slasher Nurse is going to be uh, even bigger and better than that. Hey, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That's exactly what we want to hear. And that's exactly what you want to see, too, is the, the growth between your first film or short to your next one, to your next one, to your next one, to your next one. And then you're like, okay, now I know what I'm doing and shit. It's, I can't wait to see you guys climb the ladder even more. I'm excited. Just like how Mick is like watching you guys grow. I love seeing that stuff too. Where It's like, wow, you're seeing how hard they're working at this. You're seeing how thankful, thankful they are. And how, again, like how personal you guys are and how nice you guys are. That, that, that's huge. Uh, That's huge. We wouldn't be here without y'all. I mean, as I said, from the backers to the podcasters, just the people who allow us to share on their sites. I mean, if it wasn't for y'all, like, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at. I mean, so trust me. I mean, I appreciate y'all just uh, just as much, man. And, you know, without y'all to give us a platform, who would hear us? Yeah. I, and I and see, I agree with that. And I love that you said that because there's, there's some that just don't, I guess they don't understand it or they don't see it. I don't throw out any names or throw any shots at people, but, you know. <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> um but yeah and it, it's like uh i think some people overlook podcasts especially if it's like an independent like a smaller name pod but i'm just like these are the ones you better start gravitating towards now because you keep ignoring them once they blow up they're not gonna know who you are either like, yeah. peace yeah. huh yeah no they're not gonna forget i mean just, just, uh, as we know too i mean it's like you know like you know if people like yeah we don't want you on our podcast I'm like okay i mean you don't want us you don't want us but you know, down, down, down the road, like, you know, and you reach out to us later on because, oh, these things are doing that so well. We had the option to go with uh, them or go with someone who's there for us when we were still starting off. Yeah. Guess who's getting the nod first? Exactly. Right. And that's how it should be, though. That's how it should be. Instead of, oh, well, this guy's super popular now. Now, you know, now I want to go on there and I should be first because my name is big. It's like, no, but you were an asshole when this person was small. 
Exactly. You I'm not saying like for me, it's more so of I'm not saying I wouldn't have somebody on per se, but they'd be waiting in line. Like they wouldn't be just just because of your name, especially if you said no in the past or whatever. I know why you said no. And then I don't know why you're trying to ask now and you're gonna know why I said no. Like eh, you ain't really doing too much. <laughs> One good bird deserves another, am I right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> But yeah, man, I, I really, really enjoy what you guys are doing. Keep it up. You guys are just knocking shit out the park, and it shows. <laughs> it freaking shows with the, the work you guys put into it, the passion you guys have for it. Because you can tell. That's another thing with these type of films, with fan or with the indie films, you can tell when someone's like a fan of it. Yes, I'm not saying you don't want to make it big in it, but like you can tell they're they actually enjoy this. You're not doing this just, just to try to get rich and famous. You're doing it because you have a passion for it. You're doing it because you have the passion for it. And then, of course, if anything, anything that comes after that is the bonus. But you're like, I love doing this. I got now our movies. Not only did we make this movie, now it's in this. We have distribution for it and all this other stuff. And that's that's awesome. And it's out to the masses to be able to uh, view and stuff. Uh, and, you know, that's in the, the day. That's what we want. We want people to watch our films and hopefully like them and want to keep on watching us. <laughs> OK, now. Before we before we wrap this up, and Chris, you know where I'm going with this because I've been talking to everybody on the indie scene since I was thinking of this idea. We came, we were brainstorming and stuff. Um, still, still in the work, so I don't know when I'm gonna actually have this go on, but I want to. <clears throat> and shout out to Chris. No, what's that? How you pronounce his last name? No, Notarali. Yes, for helping us with this idea on live, actually. So, <clears throat> what do you say? Two thousand. 2000 bucks or less 15 minute horror fan film original and just like uh I want cuz what I wanted to try to do on here was have whoever wanted to be a part of it whoever wanted to do it and would just follow those just those guidelines um just just as like a like a, a fun friendly competition but also like a learning thing for people like you know the fans like whoever's on the show would not be voting for whatever one's their favorite short or whatever Again, I'm still kind of working out the bugs on it, but um, <clears throat> anyway, be I'm looking at it as more so of like say, your film, one of your shorts are on here, right, and someone else's shorts on here, and your short wins or loses, you guys can kind of discuss why you did what you did. Maybe you'll make a connection off of that from the other film, you know, from the other creators, from the other filmmakers, whatever the case may be, and just kind of who knows with that because it'd be it'd be another way of it's also another way of networking. Like yes, you're you're getting to show your stuff off. And then you're also networking with not just pop, me so, so as a podcast, but also other filmmakers that would be a part of that whole thing and maybe make some connections with some, maybe not. I don't know, but I think it'd be a fun, cool thing. Oh, absolutely. I agree, man. I mean, that definitely sounds cool. And I know, I know all that stuff takes time and all that other stuff and people have stuff going on, but I want to, I want to try to get it together first, figure it out, and then maybe make it a thing to where maybe I do once a year at a certain point in the year and whoever wants to, you know, join joins. Not even I get. I would say not even. I've never been to a film fest. So I guess it wouldn't be like that. But more so, just like for and people again. People can watch it from their own homes. It's not like you have to go out to. It's like, hey, look, the masses come here, watch these films. Which one do you like the best out of these shorts? And kind of move on from there. And yeah, again, just to kind of help <clears throat> help again network. I feel like us as independent creators, no matter if you're doing podcasting, gaming, filming, whatever, we got to kind of. I mean, yes, I know we're separate entities in the same sense, but the, just the indie scene, I feel like it needs to make a big connection and connect more, especially with this damn strike going on. This is the best freaking time for oh, it collaborations. Is. If you're freaking, if you have an indie film out now, <clears throat> if you have an indie go go going now, all that stuff, connect with podcasters. Mm -hmm. And if the big ones are ignoring you, which they probably are, connect with the independent ones. Start with the independent ones. Start mm -hmm. with the independent ones. You still get a platform. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, you're still going to get a platform. And and that platform, actually, the handful of people that are watching that platform, no matter bigger how small those shows are, are those ones that are actually going to check out your stuff because they have they trust. It's like the same X amount of people all the time because they trust what the people are saying on their shows. So it's like, hmm, maybe I should go check out what Mike does now. Maybe I should go check out Bloody Summer Camp and then so on and so forth because I trust these guys' word over here on Horror Research 30. Yep. And that's, that's all it takes, guys. So just... I'm telling you, and I'm telling you guys, I've been trying to connect with Indy more. Um, but yeah, so that's just something again, just to keep in the back of your mind, man. Oh, it's, it's 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 uh 
again, I want to, um, I don't have it all planned out yet and like structured yet. Once I get it planned out good and structured good, then I'll start saying more, but I just like to, pl- I just like to throw it out there and plant that seed in any filmmaker's head just because I'm like, just in case they want to be a part of it, they see something going on. I'm like, hey, it's a fun little thing. I mean, even we can even make it, eh, I'll wait. Cause maybe even make it a time restraint as well, as far as how long you have. So you're not waiting like, Oh, well, I'm going to shoot this. <laughs> I'm going to do this 15 minute short over six months. It's like, why just, Give yourself an X amount of days. Everybody gets X amount of days. You do it. You get it together. You, you know, you put it out there, and I mean, see what happens. I mean, you, you've heard of those four eight-hour film festivals. They usually end up coming out to be about you know uh, ten to fifteen minute long films on there you go. And that's but, perfect. You know, give you a few weekends to play with should be ample time. <laughs> yeah, and on and on top of that, it also may inspire somebody younger that wants to maybe start creating films, and they're just like, "How can I do this?" or whatever the case may be. And they may say one of your films, oh, they don't have to be like, not everybody knows the film doesn't have to be, you know, an hour and a half or whatever the case may be. They can be a 15 minute short. Not everybody knows that unless they know about short films and all that, of course. And it's like, they see that and they're like, Oh wow. So I can just do like a little 15 minute short. And I mean, again, you can start out with your phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> start out with your phone. A lot of these phones have decent microphones. If not, you can get a decent one for 10, 15, 20 bucks with an aux plug it right in your phone start with that start with that and but i'm but what i'm enjoying about like these conversations and stuff is that you guys are basically saying that too like this is where we started this is how our stuff looks you guys have it out there and that that alone should be like okay yeah <laughs> yeah like let's 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 try something even if it's just short content that's fine let's just try something let's just try something man, right. it's inspiring man it's inspiring Oh, yeah, no, we're no stranger to that. We've definitely done a short film. We actually did one for the 48-hour uh, Joe Bob Film Festival. Uh, it, it was okay. called Head Rog. Um, uh, uh, but oh, well, we didn't win uh, the contest. But you know, like I said, we're definitely no stranger to it. And, you know, we, we've, we definitely made that in uh, 48 hours. Okay. See, I like that. I like that. And, and again, it's <clears> – <throat> the, I look at it as a win-win because either way you're getting some sort of exposure. Like either if people love it or hate it, you're getting exposure to the point where there's going to be a few that may like it, love it. And there's going to be a few that may have never even thought about watching your guys shorts or your guys films, your guys content, maybe never heard of you or just maybe never even thought to watch it just for whatever reason. And they watch that and they're like, oh, wow, I got to go check out some more stuff that they've done. Oh, wow. They did all this. Holy sh. And, you know, so on and so forth with every other person on there. That's what I that's what I want to happen with stuff like that is. Why not just help each other grow doing doing things like this, doing okay. little fun things like this and just figuring out a way, maybe making an event of it or whatever the case may be. And just kind of letting people, you know, show off their stuff, talk about their stuff. I mean, it's exactly why we hold uh, open auditions for every one of our films. Uh, um, uh, you know, we tell everyone, like, you know, uh, uh, we always try to uh, uh, work with people that we know uh, just because, you know, we know what they're capable of. We know what we mm-hmm. want and we know they're going to show up. But we always want new faces to be a part of it, too, because there's always new talent out there that, you know, you don't get to always see. And uh, sometimes you'll see uh, only three or four new faces on one of our new films. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll see, uh, you see almost a whole entire new cast uh, uh, in, in our film. It just just depends on the uh, film, uh, but we always uh, hold open auditions for that same reason. We want to give everyone a chance to show yeah. it because, you know, you may be better than what we had in mind to begin with. Um, you know, you, we, but we don't know until you audition uh, mm-hmm. and stuff. And no, that the auditions is, is also a great interview for everybody too. Uh, like, you know, I try to explain to people, you know, do your, uh, do your audition uh, with us. Like you would do a job interview, like, you know, be 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 a professional. Be right up, you know. Mm-hmm. All depending on what you're doing, like, you know. I mean, I will. I, I'm not gonna throw out names, but we've had people audition who uh, literally just have the script up right here, and they're just reading from it. Uh. I'm just like, all right, we know you can read, but you've shown us already. We had the question: Can you memorize lines? Because you're just reading it. You know, you didn't, you couldn't take out the time to memorize those few lines. How confident can we feel about giving you a role that mm-hmm. is of you memorizing multiple lines from multiple scenes? Uh, you know, that is a, that is a, you know, something to take into play. Um, 
it's just the way some of them uh, present themselves or like like you know like some of them just come off very stiff like you know almost like they're reading a time tron like you know and stuff and like all right well you know you're awfully stiff maybe you'll, you'll up, but you know these are the things we need to uh, figure out like you know and we all have to do this based upon you know your audition mm -hmm. so you know uh, but you know there have been a lot of great new faces as a matter of fact uh joshua kerpatch uh who played our yellow mask uh in go away um we actually already had someone who did it for our, our pitch for that we thought for sure was going to get it uh, and we even told him that more likely the part's yours unless someone new comes on the audition and just absolutely blows out of the water enter joshua kerpatch uh he did a phenomenal audition. I mean, it was like a young Bill Mosley coming to life. I mean, he just was just perfect on every level for that character. We're like, hmm. wow, gotta go with him. And you know, we had to make that unfortunate phone call to Denver. It's like, yeah, I know, I know, we said you had a good shot, but um, unfortunately, someone did outdo you. You know, I mean, I tell everyone too. I'm, I am no uh, different on that note. Like, you know, because I audition. For all my for all the films too, just because I'm the producer does not guarantee me a spot in the film. I still audition like everyone else does. In fact, I pull like I'm not even a part of the auditioning process because you know I don't mm -hmm. want there to be any conflict of uh, interest. You know, Dave and Amber strictly handle who they cast. Um, <clears throat> uh, but you know, I had to do the exact same things, and uh, and uh, one of the times I almost didn't get the part; it almost did go to uh, somebody else. It just worked out in my favor in the end that the other person uh, couldn't commit to a uh, reshoot mm. date, and I could, so I got the, I ended up getting the part. Wow, nice, um, hell yeah, hell yeah. But but yeah, just because I'm a producer, I don't get any freebies. I still have to earn my keep <laughs> and get my parts in the film, just like everyone else. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, on that. That's awesome, That's just, you gotta respect that though. It's like I'm not just getting it just because I'm the producer. Exactly. Like I had to go up. I had to audition just like everyone else uh, did. What's up, Jason? Hey, what's up, Jason? What's happening, the guy? Yes, sir. But I like that, man. I like that. I like what you, I really enjoy what you guys are doing. <clears throat> I can't wait to see more. Can't wait to have you on here again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and shit, you're gonna be. I know we're gonna be doing something together on October 13th with the charity event. <clears throat> oh, I am definitely down. I'm going to oh, for a collection. <laughs> That's gonna be a that's gonna be a fun fun time. That's gonna be a fun fun time. But we're gonna wrap this one up, people. Again, make sure you click every link in the description. You'll find all of us. Go back that Indiegogo and get all the movies. You're gonna want to see them. You're going to want to see them. Go watch Bloody Summer Camp. It's over on Tubi, but make sure you get the Blu-ray as well. And uh, guys, we're oh we 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 got something in the works. Don't worry, we got something in the works. Don't worry. <clears throat> but uh, we're going to wrap this one up, people. Again, have a great night. I'll see you in your nightmares. Peace. Hi, guys. Hi, guys.